Welcome everyone to this episode of Awaken the Possibilities. I'm your host, Terry Wilderman, and we bring really cool people to the show who share about their inward journey and their outward journey and the successes that they've experienced in business and in life. Today, we have a wonderful guest. His name is Roman Miranoff, and he's going to be sharing some very interesting tidbits about relationships. He is a relationship coach who lives in Toronto, Canada, and he helps people create amazing and enviable relationships. We can all use a little bit of that. Roman is all about teaching insanely actionable strategies that make relationships the number one source of happiness in his client's life. He has been into self-improvement for over a decade and brings his best ideas and tools to people he works with. So I'd love to introduce you to Roman. Roman, how are you? Wow, after this kind of introduction, I'm, <laughs> I'm great, um, great. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the show. Really looking forward to hearing about your adventures and your inward journey. So I know from previous conversations that Toronto, Canada is not where you started out. How did you get there? Oh, yeah, n not at all, definitely. I, I lived in Russia in a pretty small, small city back in Russia for 36 okay. years. Okay. And, and last year, in, it was 2019, I moved to Toronto and so I always had this dream of moving to North America for for about for about 15 years yeah and and finally my dream came true everything and aligned yeah yeah and and the reason I I'm so passionate about North America is because I went to work there back in 2002 mm -hmm. and I, I went to work actually to Alaska and it was so different from Russia, so totally different that I, I, I loved it so much. So I decided like on all levels, both on conscious level and unconscious level that I, this is a, this is a place that I would like to live someday. I'm uh, curious, what took you to Alaska? <laughs> well, th that's, that's an amazing story in and of itself, but basically, so I, I was on a student exchange program and uh, I went to, to work there for summer. Yeah, so that, that was about four months. So summer and September. And the reason why I chose Alaska, or actually I think I should put it like this, Alaska chose me is because I, I didn't have money to pay for, you know, for the program to find me a job. So mm -hmm. I had to find it myself. And I spent four months looking for a job and internet was not that available back then. Mm -hmm. And I had, so I had such a hard time. I even had to pretend that I was a PhD student so that oh. I could, <laughs> yeah. By doing that, I was able to sneak in the, the, the internet room for PhD students. So I, four months, I spent four, four months and just no go at all. No replies from companies. So I was applying to various companies across the US. I didn't really care about which state it was. Mm -hmm. and, and really, really just like a couple of weeks before th this, th this whole thing could be over. I mean, the, the deadline was closing. So this guy from, from Alaska, from Anchorage, he got back to me and, and very quickly he sent me a contract. That was, that, that was one of the best experiences in my life. And what kind of work were you doing then? <laughs> yeah. Well, very basic. I was making lunch boxes, just, you know, packing them, mm -hmm. packing items in lunch boxes for tourists in a, in a, there is a, a huge, a huge reserve, which is called Denali National Park. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I was packing lunches and uh, washing buses as well. There you go. All skill sets that we all need to use in our daily business. Right. <laughs> we need to be able to do it all. Is, yeah, yeah. We yeah. need to do it all. So I'm curious, Roman, what was the biggest thing, the most important thing that you learned 
from that internship? Well, uh, I would say there, I guess there would be two things. The first one is that I realized that as long as I, as long as I keep going, like I did with this looking for that job, mm -hmm. I, I will find it sooner or later. Okay. I guess th this was one. And, and the second biggest experience for me was that I, I was living in, in a very, I should say, small environment back in, back in Russia, in a small city where I was very comfortable. And then I, so I, w I went to this, I went to Alaska and it was totally different. It was so much bigger. I met people from all over the world and, you know, my comfort zone really exploded. Yeah. So you had no comfort zone. <laughs> it just was non-existent by the time you were done. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. you can say that. Yeah. So how did it feel to go back to Russia after your internship? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny enough, I, I hated coming to Alaska because at that point I fell in love for the first time in my life. I, I was 19 back then. And uh, actually the girl reciprocated. Of course, I, I had fallen in love before that, but th this time the girl actually reciprocated. And, and she later she became my wife. So I hated to leave Russia because I was missing her so badly. And, and, and seriously, the, the first day when I, I landed in, in Anchorage, I thought I wouldn't wake up in the morning. I thought I, was, I would just die. Yeah. So Aww. that was difficult. But, you know, going back home was also difficult because I, I, I went from, you know, from my, my job place, from, from this Denali National Park, I went to Anchorage and spent three days in Anchorage before, you know, departing on a plane to Russia. And those three days, in those three days, I started to miss my job so much that I was, I was almost crying. Yeah, yeah, I, I was missing it so badly. And what were you missing about it? Well, it was, it was so much fun. It was, you know, those four months, they were the, the best, I guess, at, at that point, one of the best times in my life because, you know, I met so many new people. I spoke the language that I love every day, the English language. I made money, I, seriously, for pretty, pretty good money mm -hmm. because in Russia, that was, that was quite a lot. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. So this show is all about awakening the possibilities. What awakened in you when you went to that internship? I think, yeah, that would be my, you know, realization about my comfort zone. So I, I thought of that I was, I was doing pretty good back in my, in my city in Russia. But then I realized that there are so many possibilities and yeah. Excellent. So let's fast forward a little bit, a lot. <laughs> okay. You are now in Toronto, Canada. Things have changed dramatically for you. Once again. How, yeah. how did you get to Toronto, Canada? And what changes had to happen in between that internship and you landing in Toronto, Canada to get you to where you are right now in helping people with their relationships? Okay, I, I guess the first change was that I... In the meantime, I created my, my business. And so I, I now had financial security so that I could go to another country and start my life over there once again from scratch. So I had this, you know, financial security, which was good. And another thing that actually happened was that again, I, I, I applied myself really to this process because I, I wanted it so much. I, I worked on it. I worked on it really hard. So I did a lot of things. And actually the first time I tried it, it was back in 2014. Which process and, are you talking about Roman? I'm talking about setting a goal, mm -hmm. creating a specific action plan and then 
taking taking those actions. Yeah, that's what I mean. Very, very cool. And that sounds to me, when it, there's a common word that we use here in Waken the Possibilities, that sounds like a lot of courage had to be pulled in in order for you to make your changes. Well, yeah, yeah, I would agree, yeah. So how did it, so you went from um, Alaska back to Russia, then to Toronto. Why Toronto? Well, um, I would like, you know, I, I always thought that I would like to live in, in the U.S. more specifically. But uh, th there was a very good possibility in Canada because the program that I, I went through in order to move to Canada to be a permanent resident, it was, well, it was quite easy for me to do because th the first time I tried to move to Canada was almost six years ago in 2014 and I got rejected. So my application for becoming a, a student back then, it was rejected by, by the embassy. So I, I tried once again, <laughs> I tried once again. Yeah. And, and you made it. I did. Yeah. Thankfully. Thank so tell me, I know that relationships are an important thing for you. So tell me, how is it, or tell the Waking the Possibilities audience, what was your journey about to get you to where you are now being a relationship coach? Because to go from Anchorage, Alaska, where you are packing boxes and washing boxes, and of course, all the people that you met, those were all about relationships. But what got you to where you are right now? Okay. Okay. So do you mean in terms of my personal relationships or my business? Your business. My business. All right. So after I graduated from college, I started a small business, a translation agency, but again, back in Russia, back in my home city. Mm -hmm. And I, I ran it for 14 years. Hmm. So when I love it when I hear people talk about translations because I'm uh, I'm bilingual, and I'm very envious of people who are trilingual and speak a lot of different languages. How many languages do you speak? Yeah, I speak three. <laughs> Which ones do you speak? So yeah, Russian, English, and German. And German. Okay, I knew there was a third one in there somewhere. <laughs> well, and how did you learn German? Well, I started learning it back in back in college, and but. Seriously, I wasn't because our teacher wasn't very strict. She wasn't strict enough to handle us. <laughs> so okay. I, I wasn't a good student back then. But, you know, when I, I got into my business and I, I started working, I started translating a lot of text from German into Russian. That's when I had to learn it. Okay, there you go. All right. So, so from translator to relationship coach. So you went to Germany. You had, I mean, to uh, back to Russia, you had a business for how many years? 14 years? Yeah. 14 years. Then what? Uh, well, he, the, yeah, the, that's why I asked because the, in terms of personal relationships, it was, the journey is a little bit different because uh, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not exactly connected because okay. I think, I think my first uh, the, the first thing to understand about my personal relationships is that I, you know, uh, I sort of, the, my wife actually fell into my lap because <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about women at that point. So I, I just got lucky. So we, we dated for four years and then we were married for seven years. But during that period, basically I treated her like a man. Because I, I didn't, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. And when our, our marriage ended, I had to. I was thirty-two, so I basically had to start from scratch. And b b because I wanted a new family, so I had to learn everything about dating, 
and relationships. So I spent, I spent five years, you know, studying this and really applying myself, testing every tip that's out there on myself, experimenting with this. Yeah, that was, that was one big reason. And, and the second big reason is that I, I believe that our relationships can bring us so much joy. Mm-hmm. And I believe that as a, as a coach, as a relationship coach, I can, I can help people who are committed to having this kind of a relationship. I can help them achieve that. When you say having this kind of relationship, what kind of relationship are you talking about, Roman? Because there's Trump. so many different kinds. Yeah, I guess the, the the relationship is a troubled relationship, and my my favorite clients are married couples. There you go. Oh wow. Okay. And you know what's so cool is to go from your internship in Alaska that gave, that basically started to break the egg open and opened. Um, what I'm seeing is that the egg opened up to your first marriage and your relationship with your spouse and she what what a wonderful gift i've been able to learn how to do things differently how to do because i i have to giggle a little bit when you, when you say i treated her like a man well you are a man <laughs> you know that's, however what i'm seeing is that you really took it on to learn how to change certain behaviors and values and treat people differently Am I right with that? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. So that's huge. That is absolutely huge. But here's what I'm going to say. You're still a man. <laughs> that, that's not what I meant. I meant I, I treated her as, as if she, she was a man. Oh, got yeah. it. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. I to clear that one up. <laughs> All right. If she was a man, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bet. <laughs> but good for you for studying that and, and learning it. And now you're coaching people how to do that. And you love working with married couples. So I'm curious. In, um, so in this business that you have crafted and cultivated and uh, you've had a business before for 14 years and now you have this business where you're working on relationships with married couples you know business is business but it's the kind of work that we do in each one that is that is different and to be able to work with and help couples on their relationships that is such a charge can you tell me about that well you know can, can you give us an example of some of the with that, no names no not, none of that stuff but can you give us examples of some of the results that you've gotten in working with couples and helping them with their relationships and helping them awaken the possibilities in their own relationship. Yeah, well, one example that I like is, you know, this, this man came to me and um, he, he, was, he was really worried about that his wife would divorce him and they were, I, I don't think there were any signs but you know there were some money involved in it he was he was also afraid that he would when he when he got divorced with her he would lose money so i I guess that was his main concern and so i i taught him you know even one tip that he got from me of course he got many but but the one that i love most is you know holding long conversations yeah it helped him a lot because, you know, by, by talking to his wife more and engaging her more in these long conversations, he, they, they got connected on, on such a deep level that, I mean, all his concerns were gone. Just, just, just like that, because, you know, he, he, she, she, she felt so, so appreciated, so connected to him that by seeing that he realized that no way she, she could leave him yeah that's brilliant that is brilliant so what are the tips that you have for the awaken the possibilities audience on keeping relationships fresh 
Wow, keeping relationship fresh. Well, the, the basic idea is to, to always have surprise and novelty in your relationship. Because if you think about it, love and passion are two different things. Because you can love the person a lot, but it doesn't mean that you have attraction for them. Attraction, love is about connection, about feeling important, about feeling significant in a relationship. But passion is, is um, it's all about being attracted to that person. And so the, we feel attracted when we don't feel any responsibility for that person. We, we feel that it's safe to love them. We feel we have the freedom to love them. We are not like a parent for them. We don't need to take care of them. So we do it, yeah, because we want to. But it's not our responsibility. We don't need that responsibility. And yeah, we need, we, we do need a lot of surprise and novelty. Actually, testosterone, no, I should put it like this. Novelty, it breeds testosterone. It helps increase testosterone. So that, that's, that's very important. And in more practical terms, what I would recommend doing is that, for example, let's take a married couple and um, go on a date, but make sure that you don't have any specific time to get back home. Because for example, you might have a babysitter and you're supposed to get home at before 9 p.m. That's, that's, that's not the, not the best Mood date. killer, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just you know, arrange arrange someone to be with your kids for unlimited amount of time so that you can be crazy. You can you know party until four a.m. like this. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So I love how you're talking about the novelty and the excitement. That that that's just so cool because for those of us who have been married for a long period of time. <laughs> the novelty can sometimes, ooh, let's do something different there. Let's go out and do something. Now we're stuck together in the same house. So that's really interesting. That's novel. <laughs> that's really, there's a lot of novelty there. So what advice do you have for uh, married couples whose relationship is has been sort of, okay, routine, very, very routine. We now have this, coronavirus situation going on and we're stuck in the same house together. What is your number one piece of advice for them in being in such close quarters where they may, may not be used to that? I guess it would be spending time apart strategically. Mm -hmm. So definitely take at least a couple of hours every day, you know, just to be in, in different rooms at least. Don't be in front of each other or next to each other all the time. And why is that? Yeah, be because you want the distance. In a relationship, distance matters a lot because, you know, it's like distance makes it, it actually creates surprise, it creates novelty. Very cool. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Well, Roman, can you please share with our audience where we can get in touch with you for those of us who want to benefit of your wisdom? Well, that would be my, my, my website, which is www.romanmiranov.com. And my name is spelled R-O-M-A-N-M-I-R-O-N-O-V. Excellent. And the very last nugget that you want to share, what would it be? Wow. You know, along the same lines, I would also suggest that, especially, especially now if you're stuck in one house and uh, you try to be creative you know, think of creative ways to, to talk to each other, to engage each other. Just don't go into your routines automatically. 
don't go into them on autopilot. Even, even like something that just came into my mind, you can create a separate email for yourself for talking about you. I mean, for discussing your, just your, your personal things, just, just create several emails and use that emails, email addresses for talking about your relationships. I mean, not, not the mundane stuff like this. Sort of like sending each other love letters. Yeah. 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 Also love letters. Yeah. What, whatever, whatever you want to send, which is, uh, which is about your romantic relationship. Yeah. So the, like a romantic email address yeah. reserved for just for that purposes. Never thought of that. Very interesting. Okay. Great idea. Great idea. Why? Thank you so very much, Roman, for being here today and sharing your wisdom with the Awaken the Possibilities audience. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Terry Wildman, and I would love for you to go to intuitiveleadership.com and take a look at our university that's coming up. Intuitive Leadership University, where we have the Business Wisdom School, the Leadership Wisdom School, and the Life Wisdom School. The first one to launch will be the Leadership Wisdom School. We have a super faculty that is attached to it, and we're going to be having some nice, juicy courses there to assist you in being the best that you can be from a leadership perspective. Also, please make sure to join my Facebook group, Awaken the Possibilities. And every week, come on back to awakenthepossibilities.com and listen to our newer show. So I'm Terry Wilderman, your host, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Awaken the Possibilities. Take care and wish you your best week ever. Thank you.